get some rest. Dish. Okay, if you want watch page. And let's just see where this goes. There we go. And I believe we are live. Big Bang, how are you? Like I said, I don't expect a whole bunch of people to come in here and watch this, but I haven't played this in a while, and um, I wanted to relearn it because I, I got those two expansions coming, which look really, really good, and I like this game. I really do. This is one of the few card games I really, really do enjoy playing. Hey, Misfit. Leland? Hello, Rob. Pick and sound are good. That's all I need. All right, cool. Static display, how are you? Dan, uh, Mons, how are you? Do it. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to give this a, a whirl. Now, I haven't played this in a while, so again, uh, let me move up to the table. What I was going to try was something totally different. Hold on, let me adjust this camera a little bit. There we go. And then bring it in a bit. I just realized everything was crooked a little bit. And let's just do this. There we go. And I think that's everything that we need. Perfect. You think I would have checked that earlier? No. Well, anyways. Aventura, the rule book's right here. So I may have to hit this every once in a while. Uh, but the most important thing is that I'm going to start reading the story. Don Walker. Hey, Rob, everyone. Can't stay long. We'll have to watch this later. Been waiting to check this out. Yeah, this is a great game. I love this game. This is from Ulysses Spiel. And, um, all right, so... There's certain little, little things that happen here. Now, I've already played the first one, and I marked everything down. So, I decided at the end of the adventure to take a, um... Um, a reward card so it's in here so we're going to read uh, what happens here um, I'm going to be a little rusty so if I get something wrong um, don't hold me to it um, you could if you want but we'll just do the best we can how's that alright so I'm going to read you the flavor text here so you guys know exactly what's going on Perrain Furton why can't we just say like the town of joy or something like that we have to have like this this word that i can't even pronounce in late autumn 1039 bf your voyage has led you to the capital of the province of tobrian to your great dissatisfaction the northern town turns out to be little more than a small settlement without with not much to offer this is no wonder as the city only purpose is to serve the Dubrian Duke as provisional seat of government until the conquered land of Dubrian has been recaptured from the treacherous demon worshippers. This puts you in a tight spot as your money and supplies begin to run out. How are you going to make it through the winter? In your uh, provisions, you are uh, provisions. You are ready to accept any assi assignment that might come along, but then the fortunes. The fortune favors you again, and one of you receive a very special letter. A letter. Randomly decide which player receives the letter. He reads the following paragraph aloud. See, it has a little text here that kind of leads you right through it. Hey, Kabuki. Um, so, since I'm the only player, I'm going to get the letter. My beloved, I am sorry that as your mother, I haven't sent you sent you any messages lately since our falling out a lot of things have changed in my life in my late years i finally decided to marry the duke of weindenstein your deceased father would probably not have objected to a man of high birth i hope you agree but with this good news comes also painful news as my new husband died after only two years from a mysterious sickness I write you from his deathbed. 
as he is without a hair and I have already reached the twilight in my life. I want to forget about all the bad things between us and ask you to hurry over here and claim your herit claim his heritage before the greedy gentry or the warlords of the Shadowlands stake their claim. Signed, your love and mom. It actually says mother, but I just decided to shorten it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, assemble all the uh, Weinstein uh, 1 cards and pick the card Air. The player who receives the letter places this card openly in front of herself or himself or whatever. Me, basically. For the rest of the adventure, he or she is considered the heir. Before you begin the, uh, the, your journey, you visit the archives in the temples in the, in the council. To find out more about Weinstein's barony, maybe this information can be of help to you later on. So each hero has to make a knowledge roll. Now my knowledge here on this card, I know you guys can't see it, but it is 10. Now, to get a success in this game, you have to roll underneath the number. So it's either he hasn't any hair. Okay, crickety. Oh, air. Oh, air. oh Dan, you're killing me. <laughs> so we have to roll um, either the number or underneath it. So a critical failure is a 20. A critical success is a 1. Okay, there we go. And we roll a 14. Failure. You didn't find anything useful. No effect. Wow, that was awesome. Okay, one day later, you pack your belongings, saddle your horses, and ride southward to the Weinstein, Weinstein Barony, eagerly awaiting the heritage. Despite the unpleasant weather, you make good progress on the country road and spend the nights in cozy inns or farmstead of friendly peasants whose lands were already freed by the forces of the Middle Realm. You hardly meet anyone in these deserted lands. Only a swarm of crows seem to follow you around. You are surprised by an approaching thunderstorm and have built a provisional sh a shelter to spend the night. Each hero has to make a survival roll. Oh boy. So my survival is a 10. And we've seen how successful I am when I roll underneath 10s. So let's roll again and see what we can do here. And we roll another 14. So that dice is never going to be used again. We're going to take that. Failure. You lose sleep. You sleep in damp clothing and catch a cold. Lose two health. So already we're taking damage. And we haven't even gotten to the heart of the uh, adventure. I mean, look at this. This is a really cool dial. I, I don't care what anybody says. This is really, really kind of neat. This game always makes me excited because it's just... It's, it's, it's what I wanted from, from Pathfinder. Even though I like that game. Okay. One day ride. Before arriving to Castle Weinstein... Weinstein you reach a ford leading through a wild river. You dismount to lead your horse through the water. An odd silence surrounds you. Each hero has to make a perception roll. Let's hope I have some good perception. No, I have a 10. All right, let's see if this dice can help us out a little bit better than the last one did. What do you guys think? Let's give it a whirl. And this time we roll a 15. Awesome. You are surprised and start the next combat with one hand one hand card less than usual. Great. So our first combat we are completely we have to we have to start the card one hand card less. So normally we have five cards but we're going to only have four to start. Okay, just so I can remind myself I write that down. So this has been a horrible journey all the way here. A ragtag band of dirty figures break their cover and charge towards you. So at this point, assemble all the car, all the Weinstein, Weinstein cards 
one cards, time scale with a difficulty of your choice, and grip beard grouts. That's this dude right here. Put them in the middle of the table. Next, pick all the event cards with the words General, Water, and Forest and shuffle them into a draw pile, which I did right here. The largest of the attacker, attackers bark his orders from the other side of the river. Go get them. And you know the one who has to die. He points one of his gout-ridden fingers at, at me. Now, why would you do that? I thought we were pals. Okay, a combat starts. Read the section of combat in the adventure rules. We already know that. Okay, threat value is, is this guy times number of heroes. We have one hero, so it's five. Um, all henchman cards with the keyword bandit, which I've already assembled here. See, I did a little pre-planning here. Oh, hold on. Roll high. It's Rob, after all. OFC, not. Uh, fun game. Just finished Act 1 of Forest of No Return. Using two heroes. Uh, m, m has two new releases for this on their site. Yes, Game Line, and they are on their way here. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. You immediately uh, lose the combat when the air is defeated. So if I'm beaten, it's, it's kind of all over. Now... Draw two additional action cards at the start of each combat. Mm, so that's not a bad thing. So I would actually draw four cards. Not bad. All right. Uh, all henchmen cards with the keyword. We set that the threat value. So it's just me. And it's times five. So one times five is five. So I have to draw a threat value of five okay and of course thank goodness i was able to draw a five and not like a four and then another one so if i drew like a card that had a three on it and then drew a five it wouldn't matter um i would still face two foes even though that would be eight points it's you have to get past that five so or or, or meet or exceed five so here we are we we have a mean highway highway highwaymen okay and there we go uh hold on uh i think you guys see that okay let me adjust this stupid camera so oh there we go it's amazing what happens when you can see what you're doing all right so again uh that is our bandit now our guy here what happens is we have to beat this guy within a certain amount of time so we can't attack him until um the leader can only be attacked when there are fewer henchmen in play than heroes. So there has to be no henchmen here. Okay. So that's not cool. All right. So let's see. All right. That's all we need to know with that. So now we have to go and we have to start our, our turn. So I'm actually going to put this I know that I have I can only draw four cards and I'm gonna put that there so we place the henchman cards we place the leader cards we place life point counters which we have over here place life count point counters okay that that's there too pre position hero counters blah 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 every okay combat turn all heroes simultaneously perform phases one through four and let's just go to that page so we make sure that we have and we can just run through how this whole works game turn summary that's what we're looking for okay we're going to draw our four cards now normally we would draw five but unfortunately that's just not the way it goes oh and we all got we got really good things player of your choice draws three cards that would cost three endurance now in order to get endurance you have to lay down cards, which means they're going to be gone for the rest of the game. And I did not shuffle these because my reward card's on top. So I'm going to shuffle these. Oh, boy. I just don't want to cheat myself or you guys. All right, there we go. Oh, wow, I'm getting worse cards. One, two, three, and four. So here's my beginning cards. Now I get to draw at the beginning of my turn 
two uh, two cards but because I am the heir I get to draw two more so I get to draw four one two three and four so I can only put down two endurance at a time so I'm easily going to do that gain one until the end of turn gain one endurance until the end of turn if I keep that that's a good one see it's a good one because you play it and it stays here and every time you tap it you would gain one uh, endurance or I don't know what the heck you would say uh, this looks awesome Rob as always thank you for everything you do for the gaming community Fallen Dominion the guys the geniuses behind behind Fallen Lands a great game please go buy it now uh, someone should turn off the dryer nah we're gonna dry our clothes not for anything. Like I said, you're going to hear noises in the background, but hey, this is just the way my house is. Uh, play A player can... Ch okay, we're going to use this, and I'm going to turn this over as an endurance. So I'm going to put my endurance cards here. I'm going to move this up a bit so you guys can see how many endurance I have. And then I want to throw down one more. An opponent of your choice loses three health. This does not count as an attack. Ooh, that's a good one, too. Now, this guy here has 12 health. He has 5. So we really want to want to take him out as quick as we can. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to be able to use that right away. After uh, attack, add 3 to the attack. Okay, that's not going to do me any good. Suddenly gone. Your opponent... Must return one equipment card. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'm going to put that down. So that's going to give me two endurance. Now, I can only have seven cards in my hand right now. I have six. So I'm going to have to play some of these at some point. Now, you can attack and you can play cards. Your cost for these cards are up in the corner here. So if I pay, play one of these cards, well, guess what? That's going to cost one endurance, and then I'm not going to have anything to attack with. So we need to kind of really be kind of smart in what we do here. So basic equipment is a knife. It's 1d6 if I hit. Um, hmm. And let's make sure that we do that correctly. Uh, make an attack. Attack card required only once per turn. Okay, my attack, I would have to roll under my attack depending on what it is. Now here I have an attack. Oh, that doesn't belong there. I have an attack of 14, so I have to roll under a 14. And then anything special with what I'm, I'm using would, would do that. There's a special ability that you have. Once you use that special ability once per the game, you flip this over and then it says it's already been used. Really neat thing. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep up the good work and everything you do. 15 bucks. Thank you, Static. Thank you, my brother. I played Pathfinder, and I love Aventura more than uh, uh, Pathfinder. I feel the same way. The sounds of the house life. Yep, that's all it is. Can't hear any dryer. Yeah, because it went off. <laughs> Thank you very much, Static. I really appreciate it. I played Pathfinder card game once, and it was okay. But I have no drive to play it again. I couldn't hear the beeping that was finishing its program. Ah, statics display. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Okay, I don't want to get caught up here. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. And since we are on here. Now, after my turn and after they go, one of these things come off. And when they get down to a certain level, we're going to have certain events. Now, this is a timer for the game. So we're starting with eight. Now, once we get to six, we're going to draw an event card. And that's not going to be really cool. And then five, then four, and then zero. Well, bad things happen. We can't, we can't have that happen, can we? All right. So what is pro? Um, test. Okay, so I'm going to throw, I'm going to use one of these, and it's going to require, 
This is a one-time use. Anything in a red border is a one-time use. Your opponent, an opponent of your choice loses three. This does not count as an attack. All right, so I have to roll under a 10 for my thing. So I paid one. I'm going to have to test with my range attack, which is 10. And, oh boy, here we go. Let's see what we can do. Ooh, I made it. A nine. So, he's going to lose three health. So, I'm going to attack him for three. And we're going to put three on there for him. So, that means we've got to do nine more damage. Very cool. Now, I'm going to do an another attack. I'm going to use my basic equipment, a knife. It is a regular attack. It's 14 to attack. And then if I hit, I'm going to do 1d6. Now, these guys do not have dodge, so they cannot dodge anything. Uh, shield 3. Ooh, let me just double check that because we may have to make a roll and see how that turns out for them. It may not be good for them, that's for sure. Uh, again, I'm trying to remember how to play this, and I really, really enjoy this game. All right, so just bear with me for a second. Because I want to make sure we do this right, so you see it in all its glory. And that's what's most important. Okay, so armor. Okay, so armor. So he has armor of two. Uh, armor of three. So what does armor do? Let's find out. Because armor absorbs, I think armor absorbs hits. So that is kind of important. Um, so do 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 do. Okay, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read how uh, a combat goes, just so you guys know. Um, where is it? Combat rounds. That's not it. Oh, combat. Here we go. All right, time scale. Oh, this is for the adventure. I'm sorry. Boy, I'm just killing us here. Um, armor. Okay. Armor protects certain locations of the hero's body. Head, chest, arms, legs. You may only have one armor card in play per body section for your hero. Um, to use this protection, an addition effect, you have to exhaust the armor. Okay. Well, what about armor? Okay, attack, damage roll, attack roll, dodging, damage roll, armor. Armor only reduces the damage of the attacks, never the damage of other effect cards. Ah. Okay, so. In the next turn, the mage hits the dwarf with a attack. The dwarf doesn't dodge, and... The mage rolls a 10, uh, 10 damage. The dwarf wears chain mail, protection four, and a helmet protection three. He decides to use chain mail to reduce the damage by four. Since he only has five health left, he decides to discard the chain mail, reducing the armor by another three. He loses 10, and he continues the game with two health, but he, he could have discarded. No, that doesn't say. All right, so I guess what that says is basically his armor is three so it doesn't attack it doesn't stop this card which now is out of the game um but if i attack him which i'm going to do i'm going to roll an attack and i roll d6 we have to take off three armor from that okay and he does not have dodge okay that makes sense now oh so if, okay so now now, on a d20, I have to roll under a 14. Can I do that? I don't know. I did. I rolled a 4. Oh, it would have been nice if I, I rolled a uh, 14. I, I mean a 1, because that would have been a critical success. So now I have to roll d6 damage to him. So hopefully we can do some more damage. And we did 1. <laughs> awesome. Uh, once during the game, raise the damage 
of a hit by a, attacking uh, by attack. Oh, uh, uh, the damage by five. So if I use this special ability, I can actually do six, which would be minus by the three. But I don't want to do that right now. I would do that on a really good roll. It's nice to have a stock of solo games for when your buddies can't make it. It sure is. All right, so that doesn't go through, and that's that. Okay, so we've made it through, and what we're going to do is we'll put that there. We have uh, five cards left, which is fine, because that's all we're supposed to have at this moment. If we had more than seven, we have to get back down to seven. So what happens now well it's not good for us because what happens is is we roll each card has a, a chart and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take these off so we can understand exactly what we're doing here each card and again static thank you so much bro so right here on this um, the 1 to 14 something's gonna happen 15 to 17 and 18 to 20 so you're rolling a D20, he can attack you or maybe not do anything at all. And the same thing for the guy that is a pain here. We really don't want to take a lot of hits. So let's see what happens, shall we? Okay, first we're going to start with our friend here. So we're going to roll. Now, this is the one time I want to roll high, right? And I roll a two, so I'm awesome. That was almost a critical. A hero chosen by the group suffers 1d6 plus 3. Great. Now, his armor, since we don't have any armor, isn't going to help us. But we do have a dodge of 5. So, um, that's going to be 4 plus 3 is going to be 7. He has a dodge of 5, so I'm going to roll. Now, you can dodge if you don't have an armor. And I rolled a 9. So unfortunately, that's not under five, so we are going to take all seven points of that damage. So we're down to 31 already. Oh boy, this is not good, folks. This is not good. Now the leader goes, and it's the same type of scenario. Let's hope that we can roll high. Uh, two, boy, wh where are those when I need them? Okay, the, the air suffers 1d6, plus two if the attack causes her to lose health she must discard one card of her choice from her hands <sighs> man wow so again here we go four plus two is six well let's see if we can oh, 13 that's uh we could have used that a little earlier but um that did not happen so now i have to discard a card from my hand oh boy you may make protection too uh, i'm gonna need that uh i think i'm gonna get rid of these daggers so there we go we're gonna get rid of that well that wasn't very good and uh we took six more damage so we're down to 25 health Things aren't looking good for us. And one time thing goes away. Awesome. All right. So now we're back and we are at four cards. We get to draw four. We, st we straighten these out, okay, which means we reset everything. So here we go. Hey, Rick, how you doing? It's always good to see you. I hope everybody uh, agrees. Um, it's nice to have these. Oh, okay. I was just making sure I didn't miss anything. So one, two, three, four. Okay. Lose one health to gain three until the end of the turn. Hmm. Hmm. So here's what we got to do. First, we have to make sure that. All right, I'm going to put this down. And then if your health drops to zero, discard, discard, and reset your health to one. Ooh, that's a good one. I think we're going to keep that. 
Uh, we're going to keep the orc nose axe. Um, and we're going to keep the crossbow here. Okay. I'm going to play this card. I'm going to lose one health. <laughs> kind of risky. But I'm going to gain three to the end of the turn, which is six. So that's kind of key because what I want to do is I really need to start beefing up some things. So I'm going to play, pay three, the three that I have. This goes away, by the way. Uh, and I'm going to put down a crossbow. Okay. So that's going to cost three. Then I'm going to perform two attacks. The first is going to be a range attack. Okay. Now you can attack as many times as long as you have the endurance to do it. But you cannot... I don't believe that you can attack... I think you can attack... If you have different weapons, you can attack as much as you want. Let's just double check. I don't want to do anything wrong. Uh, play action cards. Make an attack. Attack require only once per type of attack. That's what it was. Okay. So I can attack a range attack now, and I can attack a melee attack, which gives me two attacks, which I really, really, really need. So, hmm. What else do I want to do here? I want to be very careful. Okay, I've got five cards in my hand, which is fine. We've got this out, which is fine. Uh, we really need to get rid of this guy before an event happens or more things happen because we have to take him out and we've got to find a way to do that very, very quickly. So, so I'm going to pay one and I'm going to attack with my crossbow. That is going to count as an attack of course we're going to tap that thing uh, that and what we need to do is roll under a 10 which of course for us we haven't been able to do except for everybody else and that doesn't help us an 18 that's awesome so we miss with our range attack all right so now we're going to tap this again oh, wait a minute didn't i have four Oh. Oh, I didn't put down uh, the last card. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe that would have changed how I done things. No. 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 I need that. I need that. And I will get rid of that. Okay. So that gives me four. So I'll have two left over. All right. There we go. That's where I got messed up. Okay, so that's the second one I'm going to use. And I'm going to use my melee, which is 14. Uh, and we're going to try to hit this guy and get him out of here. And we hit, a ten, we hit with a 10. Now we've got to be able to add a D6 to this. And hopefully it's good. Uh, two. <laughs> oh, boy, we can't catch a break. We cannot catch a break. So his armor is going to absorb that. So nothing really happens. So, wow, that was awesome. So we've, we're down to seven cards like we should be. And here we go. We're going to, they are going, going to attack. Now watch. They're going to attack with a fervor. So let's bring that down so you can see. We're rolling on their chart. And it's a 10. So he's going to attack me. Um, attack the hero chosen by the group suffers d6 plus 3 so I'm going to take 6 unless I can dodge and we have to roll this so we have to roll under a 5 and we do not so we are going to take 6 more oh boy this isn't good we're down to 18 not cool now it's the henchman's turn Hopefully this will be a little bit better. Five, of course. Uh, it's going to be D6 plus two. 
So that's five. Let's see if we can roll underneath our thing. No, an 18. Never when we need anything. Oh, um, so I'm going to have to discard a card too. All right, I'm going to discard this. Nothing I can do about it. All right, so we have four endurance. Well, this is a sticky, sticky situation, and one of these goes away, which means next turn we're going to have to draw an event card. All right, uh, when it's their turn, and I'm not going to like that unless I can really get some things done here. So we're going to draw four cards. One, two, three, four. Uh, lose to gain plus three. Okay, I'm probably going to want to do that again, unfortunately, because I, I've got a plan here. It's not a great plan, but it's a plan. So, let's see what we can do here. Rob, you need to swap that die. I, I need to get rid of both these die. How's that? There we go. All right. So, let's take a look at all this, and let's see what we can get rid of. All right, I have no choice, but I'm going to play it, put that down. And I'm going to... Hmm. Add two to your heroes. Uh, I'm going to put that down. So that's going to give us six right there. I'm just going to move these up a little bit so you guys know we have six here. So I'm going to lose one strength. Ugh. So I'm going to go down to 17. I mean, I'm going to lose one health. I'm going to play this card. Lose one health to gain three until the end of the turn. So that means that's going to cost me one. So I have five. Plus three is eight. All right. I'm going to spend uh, six of it, which will leave me two. All right, so we're going to tap that. And we're going to play Masterful Halbert. That is going to help us big time. If we can hit with it, we got to hit with it, or else we're in a lot of trouble here, folks. And I've got three cards left. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to roll under 10, and we're going to fight with our crossbow. So... Here we go. Crossbow. Under 10. Can we do it? 10. Perfect. Um, that's going to do 1d6 plus 3. All right. Oh, 6. So that's 9. So that's going to go through and that's going to do 6 damage to him. Perfect. That's what we need. So he's at 9. We can get rid of this guy maybe. Matter of fact, I know we can get rid of this guy if we get lucky. And you know something? I'll tell you what we're going to do. During the game, raise the damage of an attack. Oh, of a melee attack. It's not going to... That doesn't help for that. Okay. See, I should have done that last. Dang. Okay, that's cool. No problem. So, here we go. We're at nine here. So now we're going to attack this, this, and we really need to hit this. Because we hit this, this guy's dead. There's no doubt about it. So we need to roll under 14. All right, so that's tapped. Oh, 15. Oh, boy, that hurt. That hurt. I have nothing in my hand that will help us. There's nothing here to, that's going to help. Nope. We're going to have to take it on the jaw here. Oh, boy. So these two are gone. That's all tapped. So now it's their turn. We're on the sixth turn, so it says right here, draw one event card. Oh, boy. Hopefully it's nothing bad. Okay. I shall read it to you. It's a general. Despair. Your quest has failed. Your whole race is nothing more than a footnote in the history of the gods. Oh, really? And giants. 
and in less than a few centuries everything you create will turn to ash in the great apocalypse. Anonymous, graffito on the wall of the Temple of Prios. You're overcome by a sudden feeling of despair. Every hero who fails at a willpower role must remove one of their their own endurance call, uh, cards. I have a willpower of 12. I really don't want to lose any endurance. Oh, boy, this is a bad, this is a bad go at it. That's for sure. Nothing good happens. Nothing good. 19. <laughs> All right. Into there. There we go. That goes there. I'm having a good, good go at this. I'm having a good go at this. Okay. Well, guess what? We have to survive this. We have to. We have to. Why can't we roll a 19 when when rolling for this guy? All right. Here we go. Let's let's hope something something good happens to us. 13. No. <laughs> we're, we're getting attacked. And it's three plus three. That's going to be six. We're going to try to roll for a dodge. Two. Oh, we did it. So that gets split in half, rounded up, but that's okay. We only take three because he was able to dodge. One, two, three. That kind of helps us. That might help us through this next turn. I can only hope. Because next turn, things are going to get real. All right, so... Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so now it's his turn. we got to survive this. 11. That's a little bit better. The hero with the most endurance cards suffers 1d6 plus... Okay, well, that's better than nothing. So it's 3, 5. So we're going to take another 5. We're down to 9 health, folks. 9 health. Come on now. Timon, how are you? Interesting dice rolls. Oh, here we go. Uh, you're done, Rob. Oh, well, listen to you guys. Where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the encouragement? Static d display was, uh, encouraging. I think the problem is you are rolling off, your offhand. You're probably right. All right, so everything retaps, well, I mean resets. We're going to reset our endurance. We have five endurance. We're going to move our thing over here. We're going to bring that back up. And we're going to draw four cards because of the hair. We normally just draw two. Uh, two. All right. Discard. Discard an opponent's talent or advantage of your choice. Well, that's not going to help me. So I'm going to use that for one. Discard after an opponent attacks. Roll to increase the roll by five. That opponent may not use fate points until the end of the turn. Okay, so that's two. So there's my two, so I'm up to seven now. Is it seven? No, it's more than that. Sometimes you just have to accept defeat and start over. No, no, no. I will not hear that. Rob's going to be going home in a box. Damn, easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we have seven endurance here. All right, so we're going to get some well-needed help here because we're going to pay five of that for some leggings, and that's going to give us protection four. So take that. One, two, three, four. Boom. That leaves us three. All right, we can do this. I know we can. That's not going to help me. That's not going to help me. Okay, I'm going to hold on to this stuff. We're going to try this again. Okay, so we're going to shoot our longbow at him. We need a 10 or under. All right, here we go. Come on, we can do this. 10 or under. Because that's going to finish this dude off. 10, perfect. Okay, so the crossbow is going to do 1d6 plus three we need a th three at least five he absorbs it he's dead nice that means that we can attack the leader now the leader has per person plus five but two defense 
Not so fast. We have to, all we have to do is hit, and we are going to win this, all you naysayers. Because I'm going to show you how this goes. We need a 14 or under. <laughs> 14 or under. Come on now. 50. Oh. I do have a fate token. I can reroll that at any time. That's it. I don't have any fate after that. Because that is what I bought. Hmm. All right. One more chance at it. Eight. All right. So now I have to roll a D6 plus six. Okay. That's two. Plus six is eight. He's going to absorb two of it. So that means six is going to go through, which means he is defeated just in time because the next one would be draw a new henchman card and place it right of the other opponents so I would have I would have, probably would have had a fight a orc archer that would not been cool so I was able to defeat him and I didn't even use my special ability if I needed to I could have used that and, and finished him so Let's read and see what happens at the end of this part, because this is part one. Rob, you did eight damage. I thought the guy had nine. No, he has who, who said that? Timon? Timon, you need to be banned. Like forever. Here we go. Timon is like the nastiest guy. He's such, he's such a curmudgeon. Okay, let me uh, pull that. Up. Okay, there we go. I want to make sure I could see that. All right, so as you can see, it's player times five health. One player, one times five. Let's do it together, Timon. One times five equals five. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's let's read what happens here. God, this is such a good game. Who makes this? Ulysses Spiel. I can't wait to get the dragon one. That's the one I, I'm, I'm so looking forward to. And I love how these adventures all take, take place. Okay, so here's what happens. After victory, heavy breathing, you look around, you look around you. The ground is littered with dead enemies. How about that, team man? Uh, you tend to your wounds and recapture your horse. Before you continue on your way, you search your enemies for any clues. Read the effects of your victory in the section of End of an Adventure. Okay. So, um, at the end of adventure. So here's what's going to happen. The heroes have succeeded at an adventure if they manage to to successfully finish it its last act they receive another reward as pointed out under end of combat in addition to that they now receive experience points for every experience point you may choose one of the following well we got one experience point okay you look up and realize that nightfall is at hand you don't intend to spend another night in the wilderness of the Shadowlands, even though their dark heartlands are still a ways off. You saddle your horses and ride to a nearby village. To your relief, you are greeted by friendly villagers. They don't know about the bandits who ambushed you. One more overnight stay until you reach Castle Wildenstein. Curiously, in anticipation, make it hard for you to sleep. Curiosity and anticipation make it hard for you to sleep, but the exhausting, exhausting journey weighs heavily on you, and soon, you soon find rest in Boran's arms. Hmm. If you played, okay, so there's another whole act to this. 
So you would play out that act. Okay, so we're going to end with Act 1, because I thought that was really good. So I think this shows you basically how this all plays out, and we had 9 health. The great thing is, is that we get to reset, we get to pick up our cards, and we're going to um, take our experience point and um, expend it, of course. Uh, that was only the first hit. What? Not that guy, the henchman. Hold on, hold on. What, did I miss something here? He only had a, this guy only had, the leader only had a health of five. Dice. Let me find out what that says. Well, let's make sure that we did this right. I know I did it right. Now, actions. Actions is per player. He gets one action. There we go. Oh, I even cheated myself, to be honest with you, because they only get one action per the amount of players. If there were two players, there would be he would have two actions. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I did it right. Um, let me make sure. That was only after the first hit. What? Oh, wow. Rob is starting... Wait. Rob, you did eight damage. I thought the guy had nine left. No. Oh, Rob is starting to cheat as well. That was earlier on the other henchman, not that guy, the henchman. What? Uh, let me just make sure we're doing this right. Not that guy, the henchman. No, the henchman took a ton of damage. Read comments way after it was posted and makes personal comments after me feel bad. Oh, whatever, dude. Ugh. Um. Don't feel bad, T-Mon. Uh, Doug. Oh, man. I got here at the end, I guess. We have to stick up for Rob. What? No, Rob. It was the other guy. It... It was okay. Henchman before the leader. He was completely wiped out. He had 12, he had 9, and if you added, uh, all he needed was 3 more damage, and he was dead. Even so, if I, if I was wrong, I would just flip this, which would do an additional 5, because we absorbed the 3. And he would have been dead anyways. There you go. So, I won. We all know Rob never makes any mistakes. That's why we all know he's more... Oh, please. That'll be the day. Um, henchman before the leader. He had nine damage. Oh, I was adding damage to him. That's where you're wrong. I did eight. Okay. It absorbs three. Yeah, I see what you're saying, Timon. He had nine damage on him. So... It, what I was adding damage, you don't take the damage off. So he had 12 health. He had 9. I did 8 damage. You take away 3, that leaves 5. 9 plus 5 is how much? It's 14. His health is 12. Guess what? He's dead. Then we moved on to him, killed him. End of story. Okay. Well, there we go. Okay, I understand where there was some confusion. You thought I was taking health off. No, that is not how it went. This was a successful playthrough. This game is awesome. Okay. The company that does this, I mean, everything is gorgeous on it. I mean, take a look at the, this dial. All right, hold on. I, I want to make sure that I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Look at the dial. Look at the art. This reminds me of the old... Um, um, do you guys remember the um, oh Middle Earth game from Ice uh, Iron Crown games? The art there was just ridiculous, and that's what this reminds me of because it gives me that feel of the old school type of D and D feel to it, and everything in here is just absolutely beautifully done. I mean, look at that. I mean, when you go through the trouble of making um, 
armor look like this? I mean, that that's just, that's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I mean, you feel like you have something really, really important. You know what I mean? It's not half, half baked dark. I mean, even the gangrene card looks pretty cool. And then on top of it, the enemies that you face. I mean, take a look at these guys. I can't wait to see what they do with the dragon because I know it's going to be gorgeous. I mean, look at these. These are absolutely beautiful. And you should see, you should see the undead that are in here. I mean, oh, there we go. There's an orc archer. I mean, look at that. I'm mean, just beautifully done. You know, it adds it adds to the experience, and that's what makes this an amazing and amazing game. Timon was mistaking you for other streamers who might be worse than math. Well, they're betas. What do you expect? Those cards are gorgeous. I'm I just. This is just, you get sucked into it. I really like how this plays out. I love the adventure part of it. As you're going through, before you even get to the combat, you have to go through a bunch of different obstacles. So the story is really, really fantastic. And there are so many expansions. I like pulled out a bunch of different expansions. Forest of No Return. Ship of Lost Souls. Uh, let me grab the other one here. There's the... Uh, Hero's Struggle, which is an expansion, and then they've got two more that just came out. So, I mean, I mean, really? Come on. So we're up to five, and I'm still working on the first one. And it's something that you can replay and replay. The other thing about, about this that really hits home for me is that you don't have to, you know, after you play the adventure, you know, you don't have to say, hey, that's it. I mean, there's a lot of different things that can happen. But what really is cool about it is you can play it against somebody. So it could be hero versus hero, which is really neat. And you get so many different things. You could play co-op, co you could play it solo, um, or you can play against each other, which is, which is fun. It's just like, okay, I'm going to fight you and we're going to see who dies first in a magic type of setting. This game looks like a must-have for a solo co-op gamer. Oh, but it also have, has PvP, Doug. So it really has a lot of different variances to it, and it just adds a lot. And I really, really enjoy the game because there's a lot of different things that happen, and there's different difficulties. Like I was playing on easy, um, well, because I just didn't remember how to play the game. I didn't want to overwhelm myself, but you have a normal, and then... On top of that, oh, I think I put it in the box. I'm sorry. But there is a difficult. So you can, even here, you can go from legendary. You could play legendary, which is ridiculous. And difficult. So, you know, there's, there's and just really nasty, nasty, bad things happen to you. So depending on how you like to play the game, if you're very, very familiar with the game and you've played through it, you can go back and try to beat it in legendary mode. The replayability is just re ridiculous. Just made a big kids game order off of Miniature Market. Had to add Warhammer Quest Adventure Card Game to the order for free shipping. Nice job, Neutral. Awesome job, Rob. I love this game. Just ordered the new expansions. Very excited. I'm glad. Why isn't Beta streaming? I thought that <laughs> was his job. Beta sleeping. Beta sleeping. Or else we would have took two players. And gone through this so there you go that's a that's a quick run through this uh, I may be on tonight or tomorrow night uh, I was going to do maybe you boat I'm gonna do something World War II but I was also looking at I do have a couple of games that I was outside and I was digging up and I, saw, I found this little thing from 1990 and it's kind of a um, it's a little different here um, this is an oldie but goodie. I've got tons of these things, and I'm trying to find out what I actually own. So <laughs> that's kind of funny. So I was looking at doing something a little different for the next stream because I did promise a couple streams on uh, TRIF. And believe me, I didn't name that, okay? Somebody else named it. Thank God. Thank Rob. It's Friday. Jeez, come on. I thought it was funny, though.
But uh, Static, this is a game I got to learn. I, I, I just don't remember it. I have a ton of war games that I've been itching to kind of get to the table and do a little solo work with. So we'll see how this all pans out. We have a ton of stuff coming from Miniature Market this week. A ton of stuff. Um, we have Darkest Night, which, uh, Doug, I think you did, um, a matter of fact, if Doug's still there. Uh, Doug did a fantastic job on it. If you get a chance, go check it out. I'm thinking of doing it and paint, and, and I have the miniatures coming, so I'm going to paint up the miniatures. So I'm actually going to be watching his playthrough so I actually learn the game properly because Doug does a fantastic job, and he's a good friend. Um, also, uh, I plan on doing... Um, oh, God, what else is coming? Uh, we have the new Warhammer um, Necron set coming. That's coming. We have the expansions for this. That's coming. Um, boy, we have a whole bunch of some really, really good things coming. Um, Jerry's going to be here next week, so we're going to have those command decks. So we're going to show you a little bit. I'm going to let Jerry uh, show off his magic skills so you guys can see some of that. I think it's kind of interesting uh what he's doing so that's going to be fun i'm thrilled for you to do darkest night playthrough thank you yeah i got to paint up the miniatures first so i want to make sure i get those done but i heard the standees are just as good i was looking at lobotomy today but if i do anything tonight it's going to be we're going to learn something so it might be a little boring but some of you might have played it before maybe we can learn our way through it i always like doing things with you guys involved and uh you know you know, it feels like you guys are here with me. Moodles, what's up? Hello, Robert. I hope you are having a good day. Moodles, it's always good to see you, my brother. It's kind of funny without seeing you in the green, bro. Uh, and on the other stream. <laughs> that stream that stream cracks me up for some reason. I'm sure he'll be on tonight. So it's just a matter of me timing it out. How do you how do I buy something at MM to make sure they they know I bought it because of you? I just put something in the comments. Um, they, they actually read that stuff. So yeah, or do me a favor, support, you know, they're, they're so happy with everything that, that I do. And I do a lot for them. Uh, we just got rolling dice and taking names. Uh, if you saw, them. oh, it's reconnected. Okay. Uh, we just dropped for a second there. Sorry about that guys. There's a comment section on the order form. What do you guys think about... Oh, you know what game I was thinking of doing and I was wondering uh, if you guys wanted to see it. It's another card game like this and I'm not too sure. Eons, Eons End. I have it. Does anybody know if it's any good? I, I, I'm, I'm trying to follow along in the um, rules there and I'm having a bit of a time. I actually learned a lot from your painting videos. Bought Warhammer figures when I was young but didn't understand what to do. Have recently begun painting again. Thanks to your video. Moodles, thanks. That that means a lot to me. And that's why I do what I do. And I can't thank you enough for that. That that means the world to me. Thank you, my friend. And thank you for all the support that you that you give uh, the beta. We really appreciate it. Um, Eons and, and then there's another one. Shadow Rift. That's another game I've been looking to. It is good, Rob. It is, is it good, Doug? Um, it looks... It looks a little intimidating because the, the manual is kind of, wow, you know what I mean? And uh, I was thinking of breaking it out today and doing it. I guess I'll just have to see how that all plays out. Hey, guys, I can't thank you enough for anything. Sup, big man? <laughs> Sup, everyone? Andy, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, there are some good playthroughs of Eons and out there. Watch, that will help. Yeah, I a lot of times I have to watch things. I really enjoy watching Gaming Rules, my good friend Paul. Paul is a special, special guy. I'm looking forward to spending some time with him at um, Origins. Uh, there's just a lot of people I'm looking forward to seeing at these conventions because I'm really expanding my horizon instead of just one person's point of view. And I think that's, that's a really good thing and uh, it's good for the channel too. Uh, and end is great. Oh, well, maybe I'll try to learn that instead and 
and play that this evening, depending on when beta goes on. It'll be either this evening or tomorrow, uh, late afternoon, because everybody has the Easter Bunny to catch tomorrow, I'm sure. All right, listen, this was fun. I really enjoyed this. And then you know what? We're going to come back and we're going to do part two. I'm really looking forward to doing Wildenstein part two. I, I kind of didn't want to do it all the way through in case some of you wanted to go out and get it, and I didn't want to ruin the story for everybody. So the first part is kind of easy and a lot of fun, so I wanted to keep it very simple and there, and then you guys can figure out the other two parts, and then after you guys have experienced how great this game is, you can guess what? You can come back and watch part two and part three and see me fail especially with some of these die rolls. Guys, it was great seeing you. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for being a part of this channel and, hey, watching the stream. And uh, always go check out Doug's stuff. Doug's a great, great guy, and he does a great job with a lot of great things. And when he plays a game, he plays it. So you get like 10 videos, and they are all fantastic. And they tell a beautiful story from beginning to end. Check them out. Until next time, it's your old pal Rob. We'll see you soon.